हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी शोइंग कपल ऑफ केसेस वेयर आई हैव टू एक्सचेंज द फेक इक आयल दिस इज आई पी सी एल बाय केयर ग्रुप इंडिया एंड इट्स अमेजिंग फेक इक आयल दैट आई हैव बीन यूजिंग फॉर पास्ट नाइन ईयर्स ऑलमोस्ट मोर देन एट हंड्रेड इम प्लांट्स एंड एंड वेरी प्रेडिक्टेबल रिजल्ट अ वेरी गुड अल्टरनेटिव फॉर दोज हु कैन नॉट अंडर गो कॉर्नियल रिफ्रैक्टिव सर्जरी सो दिस इज द टेक्निक दैट आई यूज लार्जेस्ट साइड incision and then main incision of 2.8 mm i slightly enlarge the inner part of the incision for easy injection of the iol so this ipcl is a hydrophilic iol so it's very easy to implant and you just have to make sure that all the iol and its haptics are in the groove and there is a free movement before you are ready to inject and make sure that the nozzle is inside the incision so here the mistake i did was i rotated the nozzle of the injector by mistake and uh, what uh, happened is that this ipcl when it went in it got uh, reversed as i pushed it inside the eye you can see it looks like a taco and when i push the trailing haptic inside it just opened upside down now uh, don't try to just uh, rotate this iol inside don't do that there is not enough space and you will injure endothelium as well as the crystalline lens so this is a simple technique i will show you how to just uh, remove it and then again reinject so make sure that it's completely unfolded and uh, it's in the anterior chamber push some viscoelastic underneath the ipcl so as to make some room for that and now the lens is ready to be removed so what i do is i use sinski i use this uh, dialing holes or the holes which are there in the ipcl i hold it using a capsular axis forceps which is a blunt capsular axis forceps micro forceps so there is no ac collapse while doing this and the same ipcl can be reloaded again it's a very sturdy design or material so you can reload the same ipcl unless it is damaged and now you can see that it's uh, gone in well in proper direction you can see that uh, directional knob which is there on the leading haptic is on the left side and now i'm going to just nudge this uh, haptics of this ipcl under the iris it's a very easy fake ikl to maneuver inside the eye and very predictable refractive results but uh, irrespective of uh, how many fake ikls you do you will find that uh, one in 100 cases there might be a mismatch also because we are going to measure the diameter or the length of the ipcl based on the white to white diameter and sometimes there is a discrepancy in the sulcus to sulcus diameter and the white to white so you may still need to exchange occasionally also in this case like when you are pushing the ipcl inside it might uh, open up reverse though it happens very occasionally just make sure that the the nozzle of the injector is right inside and you are not doing wound assisted injection of the ipcl and in this case as i showed i rotated the nozzle by mistake and which led to reversed ipcl but it's very easy to just uh, remove it and then reinject now this is a second case where uh, i have to exchange it because of the high volt of 13 and 100 micron and residual error was there because of the high volt and the patient had no complaints as such i decided that i will exchange it because i didn't want uh, the uh, larger pupil because whenever you have very high volt you may have larger pupil than the other eye and may have some dysphotopsia because of that and also the angles are little bit narrow so to take care of the residual error and uh, very high volt i reordered the ipcl so this is 3 weeks after the first surgery so i'm reopening the same incision so it's very easy to do 
usually these are custom made ipcl so you have to send the measurements and then they make the ipcl for that particular lens so here i am going to inject 2% methyl cellulose underneath the ipcl and then again using the sin i am just going to push it or pull it out of the sulcus and then i am going to hold it and use again the blunt capsular axis forceps micro forceps now here the mistake i did was i held the ipcl at a very thin area that is near the haptic and what it does is that it might just uh, cut the ipcl so hold it at a area beyond the haptic so you get a further firm grip you can also use the hand or hand method where you pull the end out using the forceps and then take another forceps and keep pulling it so that it comes out very easily it's a very thin iol the thickness lies somewhere between 100 to 150 micron so you don't have to really enlarge the incision you can take it out through the same incision if you wish you can enlarge inner part of the incision to make it uh, easier for you but uh, really it's a very thin iol and you don't have to cut it inside or do any other jugglery as i showed in the previous case if it uh, opens reverse which happens very occasionally maybe say once in 100 cases in such cases it's better to take it out and reinject don't try to just uh, rotate it inside the anterior chamber which is uh, which doesn't have enough space and you may land up with endothelial problems it's a very very safe uh, fakie guile to use and i've seen over a period there is no loss of specular count endothelium is safe the cataract formation is very very less like i have seen only in two patients out of 800 over last nine years who required cataract surgery after this IVL and the same patient after a week of uh, exchange you can see how crystal clear it looks so if you do proper maneuvers it's very easy to exchange the IPCL for uh, indications like reverse opening or high vault or residual refractive error thank you for watching